good afternoon. My name is Amanda and welcome to The Done Creative. For today's Pick a Card reading, we are going to be figuring out who you are going to marry. So if you're new to Pick a Card readings, I just ask that you close your eyes, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to try to center your energy, and focus in on piles number one with the amethyst, pile number two with the clear quartz, and pile number three with the yellow calcite. And once you've selected your pile or piles, you can go ahead and check the description box below for the timestamps, and I also try to pin them as the top comment. Please remember, these are general readings, so only take what resonates for you and leave the rest behind. So without delaying this any further, I'm going to give you a moment to meditate on the cards, and I will see you over at your reading. Alright group number one, or those of you who chose the amethyst, this is going to be the reading for you, who you're going to marry, and as always with my pick a card readings, we're going to go ahead and start with your tarot cards and get additional guidance from the oracle cards. Okay, wow, so already I'm seeing a lot of blue, so I'm, I'm just going to come right out and say it, this person feels like an indigo child. If you don't know what that is, you can always Google it, but this person doesn't like to blindly follow the rules. They like to know the reason behind the rule, and I don't think they're outrightly, like, rebellious so much, but they just don't like blindly following rules just for the sake of following rules or laws, if, especially if it kind of invades in what their beliefs are. But with this Five of Swords, they may have had some run-ins with people in the past or just a lot of people they don't like or a lot of enemies. And again, enemies to me doesn't feel like, like mortal enemies, but just people they would just rather not be around. This could even include their family. With the Five of Cups here as well, they may have had a rough childhood, and I always pick up on this energy when I do these Who Will I Marry Pick a Cards. So if you're somebody who's watched my past Who Will I Marry Pick a Cards, you may have selected a very similar pile. I'm already getting a very similar vibe. So some of you may be carryovers from those past videos. If you are, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. But yes, the and we've got two fives here, five of cups, five of swords. So the number 55 is all about change. This person loves to change their appearance, their job. They just love to change things. Maybe they move a lot or um, even in their younger years, they may rotate through a lot of boyfriends or girlfriends before they really decide to get married. So this person may be older than you and deciding to get married at a slightly older age than what's, you know, considered the norm, which, you know, to me these days I think would be past age 30. Uh, I just saw the age 27 for someone, so you may be, um, this person may be 27 when you guys get married, but for most of you I do feel that this person will be 30 or older when you guys get married. But with this Five of Cups, in this depiction of this card, this woman is clinging very tightly, tear-stained face here, but she's clinging very tightly to the two cups that are not broken. And normally these cups are spilled, but in this depiction they are broken. So this person really had to cling hard to their morals, their inner beliefs, who they knew they were on a soul level to really get them through some hard times in life. And we do see some kind of aura behind this lady here as well. I see a major blue aura behind this one. There's some blue back here, some white, but this person tends to have more blue in their aura, but a mixture of also green and orange kind of in there as well. This person's probably very creative, very tapped into their intuition, especially with um, just the water we're picking up here and really how important it was to cling to that intuition to get them through those hard times. But with the judgment card, this person has used what they've gone through in the past. Even if they really had to bumble through and stumble through the early part of their, or the late part of their teens, early part of their 20s, this person really did get it together in a societal standpoint. This person got it together, but they really have awoken to the truth of this world. You know, hashtag woke. This person knows what's up. They are not going to be duped or tricked into believing what the official narrative is. This person knows that there's that the, the lies run deep, the corruption runs deep, and the big part of this person's purpose here is to help change that system. All right, so let's go ahead and get into your oracle cards. 
All right, so let's go ahead and start right up here. We've got another five. This person loves change. Change your focus. This is another five of cups card. And I love the fact that this came out because this, especially that card, I was really drawn to as we were going through the first three cards, the first three tarot cards. And this five of cups, it's just reminding you that this person really did change their focus. This person that you're marrying really worked hard to see things a better way. And they really are taking that up a notch, taking it to a whole other level with this believe and succeed. This is that six of swords energy, moving on from what was not serving them and then finding a new way of operating in the world through all the changes this person has gone through and has really left behind a situation that was just less than perfect for them and what they need in their life. So this person is a fighter, this person is a warrior, and not in a, in a bad way, but they, they, they fought really hard as a young person to really get where they are, and they will be very successful in this life because they have worked so hard to get everything they have that by the time they are in their 30s and into their 40s, they won't have to work so hard because they've really laid a new foundation by changing the way that they focus their attention and what it is they're focused on. So we have here the destroyer card, light attribute, releasing what is potentially destructive and preparing for new life. And that's exactly what they did with these two five of cups energies here. They released was what was not serving them, but also used it as kind of fuel or a catalyst to really skyrocket them where they need to be in life. So they probably are someone who's very successful at their job. Even if they do change careers a lot, like we were talking about earlier, they just, they shoot right to the top almost instantly when they are hired somewhere. It's like they're applying for one job, but they get the job and they're working it for a while, not long. And then management or whoever's in charge is like, wait a minute, you would be better up here, up this ladder over here doing this thing because you are so much more skilled than you even told us about because this person I think is very humble for who they are they they're very confident in their abilities but they're not one to brag about their abilities if that makes any sense and then with this martyr card here it says light attribute learning the transcendent nature of service to oneself or a cause absolutely indigo child vibes what did I say of course, this person may in the early part of their life gotten kind of caught up in that martyrhood and really pitied themselves, really um, gave it a good go at just feeling like the world was out to get them and nothing would ever go right. But they really turned that around. Remember, they changed their focus. They are now on this path where they transcend that kind of martyrdom and they really want to be of selfless service to humanity as a whole but also to those that they love. They really want to help them get ahead as well. But with all this blue and the fact that we've got swords here twice, we've got cups here twice, this person probably has a nice balance of air and water in their chart. Air being Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, water being Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. So then here we have healing family issues. And I think this really pairs with what we were talking about earlier with the tarot cards. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. So this person may really have had to do some heavy duty healing surrounding their parents. And even at the time of you meeting them or when you met them, they just were still really in the thick of these family woes, family traumas, family issues. And some of them just had to walk away completely from the family they grew up in because it was just so toxic. Others of them, you know, that we're talking about here, are still working through these things and maybe will continue to work through these things and it may even affect your life at times where this person's kind of caught between do I do things with my spouse? Do I help my family? What do I do? I don't know what to do. But pairing that up with the loyalty card, they always do what's right. They are always there for the people, you know, that martyr. They are there for the people that they love most and really just people in general, but they, they know when it's toxic with the destroyer that it's time to walk away, and they do. Then we have the true love card. This is the romance of a lifetime. So this person, 
you just you are home with them they are home with you you feel like you've each found a missing part of yourselves not that any of us are incomplete without a soulmate or a partner but you guys just really fit well together you guys are different enough that it keeps things interesting and alike enough that you have common beliefs or common hobbies that you can really focus on and right as i said hobbies i think music might be really important to both of you either listening to music, playing music, creating music, but there's this element of music that maybe really brings you guys together. Maybe some of you met or will meet this person at a concert or some sort of music festival, or just really bond over your common love for a band or a group, um, musicians, something about music really soothes both of your souls. I love that. Then with this support card here, this person, you know, when I get this card, I'm always reminded of Aquarius vibes. And because we do have a lot of swords or air energy here on the board, this person probably does have a placement within Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, or prominent placement, possibly Jupiter in Aquarius or Saturn in Aquarius. Just really wanting to serve the people and really expand that house of Aquarius within their chart. Even if the house of Aquarius is empty within this person's birth chart, wherever Aquarius is, it's like a place where their love is. Um, some of them may even have that north node or moon in Aquarius where they just are obsessed with wanting to, you know, help the greater good, help humanity in a way that's greater than just what it is they're doing. And for our last card here, we have the balance card. Love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. A great relationship is one that both supports and challenges. So this is just that reminder that not everything will be perfect and roses. Just like with any relationship, it takes work, it takes balance. And you guys really do balance each other out. Just like I was saying about your personalities being alike enough to get along and different enough to keep things moving and spicy. And you guys really do balance each other out. So some of you may have opposite placements of this person in the zodiac. For instance, if this person is an Aquarius sun, you yourself may be a Leo sun. So you're exact opposite, but it feels good and supported. You have enough opposites and enough in common signs, houses, placements, what have you, that it really keeps things feeling good and supported between the two of you. But there are definite soulmate vibes here, and when we get this yin and yang, this could be twin flame energy as well. So only take that if it resonates. This could be your twin flame that you are marrying, which we all know that twin flame relationships are not always the easiest, most happy-go-lucky relationships, but I think that this twin flame relationship, if that's the case for you, or soulmate relationship, if that's the case, this will be a union that will last for a very long time. This isn't one where one's always chasing and then that one gives up and then the other one chases. Like, it's not like that. It might be like that in the beginning uh, for some of you, not all of you, just a couple of you, but it will settle down to where you both realize you belong together and you're just gonna make it work. So I hope that resonated for you guys. You will have to let me know below what you thought. And as always, you guys, thanks again so, so much for all your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Done Creative. All right, bye. All right, group number two, or those of you who selected this beautiful crystal quartz point, this is going to be the reading about who you are going to marry. And as always with my pick a card readings, we're gonna go ahead and start with your tarot cards and then get additional guidance from the Oracle cards. Oh wow, I love this already. This is so amazing. Okay, you guys, we've got some twin flame vibes already popping off with this King and Queen of Cups, completing the cycle, completing each other. I love this so, so much, you guys. And with the Seven of Swords, I'm being directed right here to this little symphonia or symbol here of Aquarius. And swords are that air energy, so this person could have a predominant placement within Aquarius, Aquarius Sun, Moon, and Rising, prominent placements, North Node, Jupiter, Saturn, something like that. But this person is very Saturnian, which is funny when you compare that with all this emotion and water energy we have here. This person's very mature for their age because they are an old soul, as are you. So it's really beautiful. We've got the number seven because this is that seven of swords. So this person could be a life path seven. And I'm also being shown 11, 22, or 33. Those are like the four main life path numbers I'm seeing for this person. But I also do see a life path three, 
um, some creative energy in there as well. But this person, it really took a lot for the two of you to come together or the circumstances with how or the way you guys got together were really interesting. It was very faded, but because the Seven of Swords is that card about deception, it just might be that this person was told something about you that wasn't true or you were told something about this person that wasn't true and it kind of took you guys some time to get together to realize, hey, we were lied to because there may have been some jealousy at play or somebody just not wanting the two of you to be together for whatever reason they may have had. But that's not gonna resonate for all of you. I really am seeing with the Seven of Swords that this person really had to go through some times in their younger years. They may even, you guys have some already similar vibes to group one, but this person may have had to do some questionable things or you know, thought they had to do questionable things in their past to really get them a stable foundation or a stable footing. This person may have been in trouble with the law or just been a bit rebellious. We do have a bit of indigo vibes here, but they grew out of that quickly, much like group number one. But with the king and queen of cups here, they really do represent that this person really has overcome a lot from their past and is a completely different person than they were before. So for those of you who knew this person growing up, because I am getting that vibe for some of you that you maybe grew up with this person and then reunited with them years after high school or, uh, you know, you were friends with them in middle school, didn't talk to them for many years, and then in your early 20s, you kind of started hanging out with them again or something like that. But there may have been a break in you guys the relationship or the friendship or maybe you knew of them but then they kind of went off your radar or something like that but the fact that we've got king and queen this person does have very balanced divine feminine divine masculine energy so this person whether they are male or female they're not afraid to show their emotions around those that they trust so you would be that person they would be able to be vulnerable with, to be able to show who they really are on the inside and not fear that they're going to be made fun of. Where, and I have, I've had chills like down my left leg almost this whole time, which is that divine feminine or the feminine side of the body. So this person really did have to work through the struggles of their past to really come into union with that divine feminine part of themselves. It may have been where in the past they were very, very masculine dominated. Again, whether they're male or female, divine feminine, divine masculine don't always mean what we consider feminine and masculine here in the 3D. I know it's a little confusing and complicated, but that's just what I'm seeing. And I really am being drawn to these seahorses here. So this person may have a seahorse spirit guide or just really be drawn to the sea, you know, with the cups here. This person may have prominent placements within Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, but they love living near the ocean or the water, the lakes. They love being in the ocean or the water or the lakes. They love maybe uh, fishing or just, just being near the water. Maybe they have to live near the water because it really does soothe their soul. And you yourself may be much like that because this is a twin flame energy. You're mirrors of each other. There are a lot of likenesses between the two of you. But I'm really being drawn here to the netting kind of looking stuff here on her cuffs of her dress here. So it's almost like the two of you get maybe at times caught up in the things that aren't working in the relationship. And this is just gonna be that reminder to you guys to focus on what is working because that will get you through what isn't working because you guys are meant to be together. I'm hearing that. And I know a lot of twin flames, they don't, they come into union and then they separate and then they come back into union and they separate. I don't really see a lot of that with you guys, except maybe in the early on part where maybe it was kind of a false start with the relationship you guys have going on. But you guys really do get it together pretty quickly and realize, okay, this is a twin flame commitment and we're going to make it a thing. We're going to make this a long-term thing. Let's go ahead and get into your oracle cards. Okay, so we're going to start right up here with this number seven, awaiting results, the seven of pentacles. So yes, like I said, with this seven of swords, you guys may have been waiting a while to get together. So some of you may have already been married to someone else or just spent a long time being single or been through a lot of relationships yourself to try to find this amazing twin flame connection that you have with this person you're going to marry. But all the work you're doing on yourself, so if you haven't met this person yet, just know that every bit of energy and attention you put into loving yourself and 
leveling yourself up and really tapping into that hidden potential within you, that is going to help you really attract this person into your life, especially if you do healing from your past, past trauma and wounds surrounding past relationships that didn't work out, unrequited love, unrequited crushes, stuff to do with your childhood trauma. The more healing and healed you can be and that this person can be, going into the relationship, the less of this Seven of Swords energy will be between the two of you, if that makes sense, because you guys are clearing it out. You may clear it out before anything really gets started. And again, we've got another seven, so we've got 77 here. That number may be significant, the number seven may be significant, but you guys really are a team. I just keep seeing you as this team, twin flames. And look, we've got the two of cups, twin flame vibes. What was I, what was I saying? Twin flames for sure, twin flames for life. And you guys will come together and form a beautiful union. And I'm really being directed to the palm here. It's like this little pearl here, this pearl, this seed being planted. So many of you guys will have a family with this person and it's gonna be, especially with the Seven of Swords and just what's gone on in the past, you guys really are taking it up a notch with your own family, really living a different life with the children that you guys create or the pets that you have if you're not interested in having children. I think many of you are that are watching this, but those of you who aren't don't feel that you need to try to force that into your life. If you do not want children, that is absolutely your prerogative and you don't have to accept that part of this reading. But you're coming together to build something, that's for sure. Children. Um, pet parents or like a relationship, uh, a home, uh, a business. You guys are creating something and it's a lasting legacy is really what I'm hearing. So then here with the worth waiting for card, divine timing is at work in your love life, especially remember if you guys really had to work to find each other or to come together or to cut through the BS of other people lying about what's going on here, really putting in that effort and patience, 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 I keep hearing but they are worth waiting for, you are worth waiting for for them, and it really does work out all in divine timing. And again, twin flame vibes, past life relationship, you have known each other before, absolutely you have. You guys have gone many, many lifetimes together, and this is gonna be no exception. You guys are going to be able to have a, um, like a storybook ending this time, is really what I'm hearing. Whereas before, many lifetimes in the past, you guys were always in separation or only one of you was incarnated and the other was working more as a spirit guide. But it's like, I just heard this time we're gonna get it right. So however that resonates for you, this feels like very, very beautiful supportive energy. Like all your guides and angels are, all their guides and angels are really working to make this thing fit, make this thing work for, for finally. Like I just keep hearing, finally, we're able to do this. Yes, let's do this. And then with the Don Juan card, the light attribute spotlights your positive, seductive qualities. So this person really is a romantic at heart. They are a smooth talker, but not in a way that's like creepy and gross. Like they just know all the right things to say to really cut through the BS and get straight to your heart. Um, they aren't just lying. These are things they truly mean and feel. They feel very deeply with these this cup's energy. They feel very deeply and very strong their love for you is endless. Like no amount of cups could hold the love that they have for you. And of course, this person really had to struggle and work with self-love. And I think that's something both of you are going to trigger and help each other learn in the relationship is to love not only each other, but yourselves, that self-love. And then with this healer card here, it says the light attributes, passion to serve others by repairing the body, mind, and spirit, ability to help transform pain into healing. Absa freaking lutely I love when it all lines up and just corresponds with what we've already talked about. And the two of you together are healers. We've got a couple here, a couple here. I just get major healer vibes from both of this. And there's a lot of green going on in these two cards. So you and this person both have a very beautiful and open heart chakra, which again, if you don't feel that's the case right now, some healing and some tuning up of that heart chakra will really help get you where you're going. But when you are in union with this person and things are really going well, both of you will have beautiful green auras and beautiful open heart chakra areas. Then with this grace card here, this is just reminding both of you and just this natural ability that you both have to have grace, to 
have that sense of forgiveness and not knowing, just knowing that these people in the in life aren't perfect. We're not perfect. And to give each person a little bit of grace and both you and this person are pretty forgiving until you're not is really what Spirit's showing me. It's like it, you know, even you growing up, maybe you really struggled. You would just give everyone the benefit of the doubt and really give people a lot of chances until it just got to be too much and you just start to have having to cut people off in your life. And I see a similar vibe with this person you're going to marry. They really had to deal with that growing up. But you guys have each found a balance in, okay, when is enough enough? Or when can I extend that grace and allow this person to make their mistakes and to learn and grow and heal from what has transpired and still be there for this person? That's really what I see here. Um, but the, the writing on these cards are very funny, so I'll just read this one here. I face disagreements with grace and flow through the ups and downs of my relationships without getting thrown off center. Again, balancing it out. With grace, I'm able to keep my cool, be my best self, and not resort to name calling, even when that crappy poo-poo face is being a douchey barf monster. Oh my goodness, these cards, I tell you what. Um, yes, so holding your tongue and not name calling when you guys are disagreeing. Holding your tongue and not saying something that's going to hurt the, this person long term and vice versa. You guys are both really skilled at that. Whereas maybe in past relationships, either you or the person you were in the relationship with was quick to call you a name or you call them a name or, well, I hate it when you do X, Y, and Z. In this relationship, you guys work to really not hurt each other's feelings and it shows. It's beautiful. Then with the depth card here, yes, there is this sense of depth. This is going to be the deepest relationship you have with anyone on this planet except with yourself because this person knows you like you know yourself. So it this person gets right to the heart of who you are and what you're here to do just as you do the same for them. So it's like you guys are each working to peel back all the layers because this is an onion here, peeling back the layers and going deep within the relationship, especially if both of you had trouble really showing your partners in the past that more vulnerable side. Remember, vulnerability is the name of the game in the relationship you are in with this amazing person you're going to marry. And for your last card here, it says, it is important right now to take a step back and spend some time alone instead of placing your focus on another. Now is the time to give to yourself. So having that alone time where you're doing your own thing and this person's doing their own thing will really help recharge your batteries to be able to come back and give it your all in the relationship. And I don't think this really, as far as that beginning stage of your relationship where maybe things there's maybe other people involved and some deception going on with other people. Um, after that, it's like sh just showing that you don't need like, you know, months or years away from this person. It's just if you can have a day a week where you just kind of do your own thing, this person does their own thing. It really helps you guys feel fueled in what it is you want to do and accomplish and dream of doing. Having time to spend on your own passions and allowing this person to do the same will really help you guys come back together in union where you, especially if you are working together, living together, raising a family together, like it can sometimes be a lot. If you're always in this person's energy, they're always in your energy. So allowing yourselves time to also have your own friends, have your own hobbies that don't include this person. Will, will give you guys enough space to really, when you do come back together, it's exciting. It's like, oh, well, what did you do with your friends? What did you guys do? What did you create? You know, it, it gives you guys something where you don't already just know everything about this person and there's nothing to talk about. So just allowing yourself some time away and this person's time away and it doesn't look like separation. This just is, you know, that chaser, chasey kind of thing with the twin flame. It's because we are, as individuals, meant to have our own inner environment and not be bombarded with other people's energy all the time. We need times where we can take a step out, recuperate, recharge our batteries, and then come back to our relationships with a full charge. So I hope that resonates for you guys. You will have to let me know below what you thought. And as always, you guys, thanks again so, so much for all your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Den Creative. All right, bye. All right, group number three, or those of you who chose the yellow calcite, this is going to be your reading about who you are going to marry. And as always with my pick a card readings, we're going to go ahead and start with your tarot cards and get additional guidance from the oracle cards. All right, so to get us started here, we have the tower card. 
Wow, this has been quite the theme with my three piles today. A lot of these people have had a rough go of life or a rough childhood or just rough in love in the past, just had rough relationships, but you are here to really help this person build a new foundation. They are finding in you someone who can really right the ship or build a solid foundation is just what I keep seeing and hearing. Yes, this person may a lot of times with the tower card just feel like completely starting over, scrapping a relationship, scrapping a job, scrapping where they live and just picking up, leaving, starting all over. And sometimes I think they actually thrive under the pressure of, well, that didn't work out, what's next? Not to say that when you two get together, that's how this person's gonna be. This person, this feels like very um, late teens into early 20s, maybe even to mid 20s energy, and then they start really figuring out, okay, I can build a solid foundation, possibly with your help, and figuring it out from there where they're not having to scrap everything and start from scratch again. But with this Queen of Wands energy here, this person is very creative. This person loves to get their hands dirty, to work with their hands. I've seen very third house vibes for some reason, which is normally ruled by Gemini and the natural zodiac. So this person may actually have some Gemini placements. I mean, we do have swords energy here on the board, air energy. So they could have Gemini, they could have fire signs, sun, moon, rising in Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Tower is ruled, I want to say that is Scorpio energy, but don't quote me on that, but I am getting Scorpio vibes from what, what's going on here. Very Plutonian energy, very Pluto energy, death and rebirth, eighth house energy, you know what I'm saying. This person loves really digging to the heart of something like a detective or a private investigator, even if that's not what they're doing for work. They just love to know all the things about the people in their life. So they may kind of go Facebook stalking. I don't think this is in a, a really bad way. They just are curious about people and kind of maybe want to know where they live or where they work or what it is they're doing for work. This person just likes to be in the know about the people they know. So they may go online and do some investigating and digging just to see. It's not that they're using this information for anything but their own curiosity most of the time. So don't get worried. This person's not some sort of crazy stalker. They just love to know what's going on and get, you know, this is the person to go to if you want to get to the bottom of something or know about someone. You go to them because they know not just what's been said out there, but they get to the heart of it. They get to the truth. So this person may even be into like conspiracy theories or something like that, where they're really digging, researching, trying to figure out if the official story is even true or if it's not, what are maybe some other things that could be true instead. You know, this person really does like to dive deep and really figure things out. And for some of you, when I said dive deep, uh, this person may actually work in the field of mining or where they're digging trenches for to, to lay like fiber optics or phone lines or power lines or something. This person may work a job where it's very physically laborious or demanding of them uh, because they really enjoy working out. So they may have a job where it's very physical, where they're on their toes all the time, working, moving, doing things, uh, lifting weights uh, in the gym could be something they really enjoy doing. Just they have that heavy, I'm just really feeling very strong Mars energy. So this person may have a high libido, a high, just they just are on the go a lot. They want to get things accomplished. They don't like sitting down and just uh, like, they just see like sitting down reading a book as almost like wasting time. The only time they will sit down and really focus is when they are researching something they're very interested in. So this person may even have a bit of what we consider in the modern world an ADHD, but this, that actual way that their brain is wired really helps them compartmentalize all the different areas of life, all their different interests, all the things they want to do. And they really do their best thinking a lot of times when they are physically active. So they may be running, they may be skiing or snowboarding or just getting, getting out there in nature or, you know, they, I just feel this person just likes to think as they're moving. Like that's how they really get their gears going, I do see. But with this Eight of Swords, there could be a downside to that. This person really at times does feel mentally stuck with whatever they're presented with the evidence while they're thinking and going about what they're doing. 
they may start really thinking badly about themselves or feeling like they're stuck when they really aren't stuck. So you, this is where you come in. You really come in and help kind of right the ship as far as their thought patterns. They may go on some downward spirals about themselves. Some of these people just, they think and feel so deeply that a lot of times they internalize what they're thinking and feeling as their own fault or I'm not good enough because I did these things in the past. So they will continue to sometimes hold that against themselves. But this is where you come in to really help this person see through the BS of their own mind and realize that they are a good person and that maybe some other people that they've written off because of past evidence, maybe it's time to give that person a second chance. Maybe they aren't that bad of a person. And for one person in particular, you as the wife or husband come into this person's life and actually help them get on better terms with their father. This person may have cut their father out of their life at an early age, um, but you as this person marrying them are going to help bridge the gap from them to the father to really mend that relationship. All right, let's go ahead and get into your oracle cards. Okay, so let's go ahead and start right up here with the number two, spread your wings card. This is the two of wands. This person, especially once the two of you get together, this person may change their life completely, go in a whole new direction. That wands energy is pretty strong here. And I'm really seeing the fact that you really come into this person's life as this catalyst to help them change into the person that they have on, that they are on that soul level. You really are that catalyst to help them want to be a better person, to level up, to tap into all of their potential and really start living from that authentic self. So maybe before they knew you, they would try to put on a false mask and try to show other people this version of themselves that maybe either wasn't true or wasn't 100% them and trying to hide the more imperfect parts of themselves. But you really come in to show this person, no, you can be your true authentic self in all moments and who's meant to be in your life as a result of that will stay in your life and those who aren't meant to be here will leave. But this person does love to plan for the future and they love to start things. It may at times be hard for them to finish things, but I think again, that's where you come in to really help them with that solid foundation to start something new and to see it through because I am getting very strong Aries vibes all of a sudden with that Queen of Wands, pairing it up with the Two of Wands, that this person really loves to start things, but that excitement of starting them is what's fun for them, not the project itself. So you are that person that comes in and really helps them see something through, especially if it's something they're really passionate about. They really will see that through, but the things that they're not as passionate about, you really come in and help them keep going on that road to accomplish that thing. So then we have the three, which is the um, Empress in the tarot, Nurture. So this is a very motherly energy. This person, whether they are male or female, they really love you in a way that really nurtures you. And I think you do the same for them. You know, I'm really picking up soulmate vibes with you guys. Not to say if you identify as twin flames that that's not the case. I think there are a handful of twin flames watching this pile, but for the most part, you guys are soulmates. That's really the main theme that I'm seeing here is you guys are soulmates and you guys incarnate life after life together and you may find that when you meet this person, you feel like you've known them for a lifetime already and you're just kind of getting reacquainted. It feels like, you know, lifetime after lifetime, you guys incarnate together and it's like you're just picking right up where you left off in that last lifetime and starting in this life. It's really beautiful. But you guys really nurture each other. But this person really does mother you. Even if they are a male, they really find ways to buy you what you like. They make your favorite meal. They just hug you randomly and just let you know you're safe, you're protected, you're loved. Like a mother would to a child. But of course, this is a, a love relationship, a intimate union relationship, but this person has this element of love and nurturing with the way that they love and care for you. It's really beautiful. Then with this getting to know each other card, as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So some of you guys may even start out as friends or acquaintances or work, you know, colleagues. And you, as you guys get to know each other, you start to realize, wow, 
I really like this person as more than a friend or a colleague or an acquaintance and the more deep conversations you guys can have together, the more you guys do realize we are soulmates, we've done this before and let's do it again, it's very fun. And then with this flirt card, extend your lighthearted energy to others. I do feel, even if you guys do start out as friends, either one or the other or both of you may for a while have feelings for the other without knowing or thinking that the other one has feelings. And so you guys may be friends for quite a while and wishing that it could move to the next level, but you're unsure or thinking, well, if I confess my feelings to this person and they don't like me back, then that ruins this amazing friendship we have. But that's not going to be the case for you guys. You guys are going to really deepen your bond of friendship and create a beautiful love relationship with it where you're still maintaining this kind of best friend status with your love. And just remembering as you guys go through life together as a married couple or as partners that you don't want to let go of that remembering that you guys are friends first and to continue to date each other, flirt with each other, have that lighthearted energy with each other. Don't get so serious in raising a family or working or just going through life that you guys just become ships passing in the night because I do feel for some of you that could end up being the case if you don't put a lot of effort into your relationship. Not to say it will break you up, but you guys, I think both of you had tendencies to just kind of go within with that eight of swords and start like that mental chatter like, oh no, maybe I'm not good enough for my husband or wife. Maybe, maybe this, maybe that. Especially pairing it with that hermit card here. Because with the shadow attributes of this card, it says withdraws from society out of fear of negative judgments of others, refusing to help those in need. And I think it's more about the um, judgments of others that really really might start to kind of bring the two of you apart, but remembering to just seek solitude to focus intently on the inner life. So the alone time is great for both of you, much like group two. There was this element where you needed time alone to really go within and discover who it is you are, what it is you want to do, but also not doing that so much that you guys become ships passing in the night. So this relationship is going to be one where you got to keep things spicy, you got to flirt, you got to put yourself out there, you got to have heart to heart conversations a lot, and you just, you really got to help each other. Even if you guys are working two totally different jobs, you need to um, be there for the other person when they have a goal or a desire or a wish as that big cheerleader and asking or checking in on them like, oh, how's it going with this? How's it going with that? And they the same for you will help you guys be, you know, together, united fronts, even if you have a lot of other things going on that doesn't involve the other person, if that makes sense. So then we have the child orphan card, independence based on learning to go it alone, conquering fear of surviving. Yes, this person growing up, going back to that eight of swords, this person growing up may have had a really rough childhood that almost just neglect or feeling like they were all alone in the world. Maybe that's why they want to nurture so many people is because they didn't really get that nurturance or they got that nurturance so fleetingly or far and few between that when they did get it, they really, you know, immersed themselves in it and that kind of bridged the gap for them. They may have had a mother that worked or wasn't around that much. And it's not, I don't think that this mother was neglectful by any standards, but it just may have been that this person didn't get that really one-on-one -on -one bond with the mother that they wanted to. It could have been because there were a lot of siblings. It could have been because this person was adopted as a child or a very young baby and that nurturance that they would have gotten from the birth mother was cut off or severed and then the connection with the adopted mom was probably for most of them very good but she may have been busy and had other children and just it wasn't the intense connection this person was craving I think from a very young age but that's where the two of you come in to love and nurture each other it really helps kind of bridge that gap between what this person missed out on and what they can have with you because we do have the wholeness card here and I'll just go ahead and read this. I am complete whole and filled with love. I have everything I need. If I ask or look for more, I'm ignoring the love and gifts that I'm are already in my life. Instead of being grateful and acknowledging that anything else would be extra icing on life's cake. 
FYI, to whoever is listening, extra icing is totally awesome, as it's obviously the most delicious part, which is cute. So this is just saying that each of, of you are whole and complete on your own, and the more whole and complete you can become before you meet this person, or if you're already with this person, just really working on your own self-development, but again, not going so far off the rails with the relationship or just focused internally on yourself that you ignore the person. Um, because this person is that extra icing that's amazing and it just makes life even sweeter. So just remembering to check in with each other very frequently because you guys are a perfect match. Congratulations! You've gotten your and everyone else's wish. This is an auspicious sign that a healthy, authentic relationship is either here or on its way. This is a sort of relationship where you don't have to compromise, settle, sell out, or otherwise be a non-you. Remember, you're helping them and they're helping you become your most authentic selves. I love that. So yes, you guys really are the type of couple that you really are made for each other. You're fitted for each other. You're not so alike that it becomes boring. You're not so different that it becomes difficult. You have a beautiful balance. All right, and for your guys' last card, we have deep in your heart, you already know the answer. Do what feels right. So yes, you guys already know deep down using your own intuition and this person using their intuition that you guys are meant for each other. Remember, perfect match. No, not, Nobody in no relationship is perfect, so to speak, but you guys are perfect for each other, if that makes sense, because... To me, perfection isn't just something that's easy all the time. Perfection is something that helps us grow and level up with that two of wands. Remember, you guys are really triggering each other in good ways to level up, to tap into your innermost highest potential and to really thrive, helping each other, supporting each other, nurturing each other, being those cheerleaders for each other. It's really gonna help you guys become your ultimate true self. It's beautiful and you guys help each other get there together. So I love that. You guys will have to let me know below what you thought and if this resonated. And as always, you guys, thanks again so, so much for all your likes, comments, share, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Done Creative. All right, bye.